Hi everyone, it's Monica from TaylorMade Cards for You. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a Halloween card that I created with one of the new stamp sets from Tim Holtz. This is a really fun Halloween set because it has uh, several monsters that you can work with as well as several sentiments to go along with the monsters. Now for this card I'm going to actually show you a technique on how to create wood grain um, panels out of white cardstock. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you're going to want to start out with a piece of white cardstock measuring four inches by five and a quarter. And you want this paper to be a little bit thick. Once you cut down the paper, you're going to go ahead and emboss it using your wood grain embossing folder. So to create the wood panels, I started out with some distressed stain. And the color that I'm using is ground espresso. But you can use any of the dark stains. Walnut stain probably would work just as well. You're going to want to cover your panel completely and it will be a little bit saturated. But once you've got it completely covered, you're going to come in with your um, heat embossing uh, drying tool to dry off your panel. Now you're going to want your panel to be fairly dry because we are going to come in with some of the other distressed mediums. We're going to be adding some oxide ink as well as some distressed crayons because we want to create an imperfect panel. We don't want this uh, tree panel to look perfect. It's a Halloween card so we do want to grunge it up a bit and uh, create some distress uh, to just make it look appealing to the eye. Now I would recommend um, using some of the more muted colors. You definitely don't want to come in with your brights. Uh, so your vintage photo or your uh, walnut stain would work really well. I'm also using antique linen. Essentially what you're doing is just creating some grunge and some imperfection. And I'm using a baby wipe to move some of the mediums around. As you probably know, the distressed product reacts to water. And the baby wipes have moisture. So using this to move the medium around uh, works really well. Now creating grunge doesn't have to be perfect. So all I'm doing is pulling some of the earth tones and adding some different colors and then moving it around with the baby wipe. There are so many colors you could probably choose to do this. Um, so just pick what you like and play a little bit to see what looks looks good. And once you're happy with the colors, let's go ahead and give it one more round of drawing so that way we can get it ready to cut uh, the panels. Now to cut my panels, I am using the tonic paper trimmer. And what I really like about this particular paper trimmer is that the blade is really sharp. When you're cutting an embossed piece of paper, if you don't have a sharp edge, the paper will tear. I'm cutting the panels a uh, half an inch and then I'll cut them uh, on the grain. You want the grain to be long. And then once you've cut all of your strips, you're going to cut the length to three and a half inches. Now when you're cutting these panels, you want to come down fast and sharp. If you go too slow, then you're going to actually um, have some of those grains fray and you don't want that. You want to have nice crisp edges. And once you finish cutting your panels, again, you're going to cut them lengthwise uh, to about three and a half inches. Now you're going to want to keep the smaller pieces as well because those will be pieces that you can also use um, when you're uh, creating your card. Now after you've sliced your panels, some of your edges may actually have some white showing. So that can easily be fixed by adding some of your distress stain or even your distress crayons. You just want to edge them up so you don't have any of that white showing um, on your wood panels. All right, so now it's time to work on our back panel. Now I'm using another embossing folder from the Tim Holtz collection and the panel that I'm using is a little eclectic. I wanted it to look somewhat industrial and this is uh, the one that kind of fit my need uh, the best. Again, I'm just grunging up the background, adding some of my Distress Oxides, and then working with that baby wipe to move some of the color around. This doesn't have to be perfect, so just add some color um, and move it around until you're happy with the overall look. And again, you can come in with other sorts of mediums. You can come in with your Distress Stains, you can come in with your Oxides like I did initially, and you can even add some of the Distress Cryon if you choose to. Just have some fun with it. And then finally, when you're happy with the overall look, 
just come in with your drawing tool so that way you have set all of your mediums and you have a nice surface to work with. Now as a final touch to that background, you could also um, use your distressing tool to fray up some of the edges. This is just another technique to grunge up your card. Even if it tears a little bit, don't worry about it. Um, that's uh, part of the fun of grunging up your card is to have some of those imperfections. You want to have it look as worn as possible because it really does make uh, for a great looking card, especially on Halloween cards. You don't want those to be perfect. So grunge it up, tear it up, fray it up, make it as grungy as you like. All right, so now that we have our back panel all uh, distressed and ready to go, it's time to put our card together. Now the look that you're going for is one of a boarded up window. So you don't want these wood panels to be perfectly straight. You want them to be a little bit hodgepodge, but again, you want it to look like you're boarding up a window. And you wanna make sure that you also do use some of the smaller pieces. You're going for kind of a zigzag effect um, but you don't want to have any of the background showing. So you can easily use some of the smaller panels to cover up some of those areas that you might leave open or just um, lay them across the panel as if it's holding the wood in place. Now while we are using some tape to um, hold down some of these paper panels, you don't have to use too much tape because we are gonna come back and add some brads to look like nails. So just use enough tape to hold the panels in place and then we're gonna come back and add the brads. Now one thing you may have noticed is I didn't add the brads um, as I added each uh, wood piece. And that's because I knew that I would be covering some of the edges and I didn't necessarily want to use brads if I didn't need to. Now the tool that I'm using is just a simple piercing tool um, you could easily use a, a small hole punch to also cut the holes for your brads. And I'm just using a uh, piece of wood that my husband found in the backyard um, as the back for my piercing tool. The brads that I'm using are a little bit shiny because again, I wanted them to look like nails, um, but you could use any type of brad. Um, the black ones would work fine as well. And then I'm adding um, them in the middle of the planks uh, to look like they are nailed into the wall. Now you may have noticed I added a uh, spider as an added embellishment. This is one of the spiders from the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection uh, that came out for the Halloween season. Uh, you could easily add a spider or even a little round sentiment if you wanted to, um, but the brads work perfectly with these little additions and um, they're fun to uh, add to your cards. All right, so once I have my background completely finished, it's time to pick which stamp I wanna use for my image. And the set has lots of choices. In the beginning of the video, I shared a card uh, where I used the mummy, uh, but for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the skeleton. And I'm uh, intentionally choosing images that require very little coloring because I wanna focus more on the technique for this video rather than my uh, Copic coloring. But with this design, any of those images would work well. Um, you could easily use um, the Frankenstein, which I saw on another card, um, or any of the other images. And they have really fun sentiments to go along with these images as well. Now, I decided to stamp my sentiment uh, using my Candied Apple uh, Distress Oxide ink. I thought that was the close lo closest looking uh, to blood, and I'm going to embellish the card with some red just to create some blood splatters. So I thought that the Distress Oxide worked well for my sentiment. Now once I finished stamping my sentiment, I did uh, decide to fussy cut my image just using my small tonic scissors. Um, if you have a scanning cut, you could easily use that, um, but I don't mind fussy cutting um, and I know that I can control the cuts um, with these little scissors that work well for this. So once the image was completely cut, I did add just a little bit of color. I'm using antique linen a distress crayon just so my image does not look bright white. Again, I'm going for a bit of a grunge and I am gonna add a little bit of red uh, to show a little bit of blood coming out of the teeth. And then finally, just to have the edges pop a bit, I am coming in with black soot distress paint. 
So once you have your image uh, colored up the way that you like it, you're ready to adhere it to your panel. Now I wanted to have the image stand up just a bit, so I am coming in with some um, adhesive foam tape just to have it raised a bit over those wood panels. And then I'm going to use one of my stitch die cuts to frame my sentiment and put that directly beneath my skulls. Now before I add my sentiment, I did want to distress it just a bit. So I am using this distress tool from Tonic. And then I'll outline the frayed edges with one of my distress crayons. Now I decided to use um, candied apple because that was the color that I used to stamp the sentiment and I thought it matched uh, really nicely. And then finally I'm going to add some distress oxide antique linen to uh, mute out the white panel. I didn't want it to be um, white, I wanted it to be a little bit grungy and the antique linen worked well for that. Now at this point you're ready to add your sentiment. Now for this particular card, I did decide to use the stamp sentiment that came in the monstrous stamp set. You could easily add one of the Halloween word bands that came out for the season, or even one of the clipping stickers to have a little sentiment or a little clip. Um, it's really your choice, but there's a lot of ways that you can go with this card. I chose to use the stamp sentiment, and I'm going to adhere it right underneath the bones. I didn't want it to be exactly straight, so I did uh, make it a little bit crooked. And then using my piercing tool, I'm gonna add a couple of holes to add my brads. So once you've adhered your image and your sentiment, you're ready to mount your panel onto your cardstock. Now, whenever I'm creating greeting cards, I do like to use a heavyweight white cardstock because I think it just holds your, your panel up just a little bit nicer. And especially when you're working with um, heavy mediums, we have a couple of layers on this. So your card base is gonna be a little bit heavy. So you want a nice sturdy base. Now to adhere my panel, I am using my pink ATG gun. But again, you can use any type of adhesive. You just wanna make sure that it is um, good quality and it will hold your heavyweight panels. So once you've adhered your panel, you can um, choose to either decorate the inside of the card as well, or simply just put a nice Halloween stamped greeting. So I hope that you've enjoyed my process of creating this uh, Halloween card using the new stamp set from Tim Holtz called Monstrous. If you've enjoyed the video, I would sure appreciate a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your friends. To connect with me, you can find me over at tailormadecardsforyou.com where I'll have links to all of my social medias including my personal YouTube channel. I plan on doing a seven days of Halloween series next month, so you don't want to miss out. All right, everyone. Thanks for stopping by.